everybody, how's it going? So got a real special episode for you guys today. Uh, we're checking out rock and roll fossils. And by that, I mean instruments from the 80s, uh, from when I was a teenager, you know, back in the good old days when, you know, bands were real bands and drummers played on their records. I know, insane, right? But it actually happened. We're not talking about, you know, rich and famous bands. We're talking about the local bands. We're talking about guys who grew up on the Windsor scene alongside me, um, like my very good friend, Steve Chason, who helped me build this place. Well, actually, let's be honest here. Steve did most of the work and I just wired it. Uh, Steve used to be in a band way back when. I played them on Merciless Metal Mix reviews uh, a couple weeks back and the band was called DNA, Death by Nuclear Annihilation. <laughs> Our very good friend Craig was their bass player and uh, he had this Rickenbacker bass from a previous band known as LSD, Little Shit Disturbers. Witty stuff, I know. I remember that was the thing back in the 80s. We had all these, you know, three initial uh, named bands, you know. Uh, who else was there? Um, oh, too yeah, many to count. Yeah, there were yeah. DNA. Um, yeah, well, no, come on. Throw me one, man. Who? Oh, let's think of something here for a sec. You're asking me to go into the filing cabinet? Come on, man. <laughs> I remember, but that was the that was the real trend though, where the little three initial band names: LSD, DNA, um, DOA. Uh, DOA. Oh yeah, there yeah there was DOA. They were they were more of a punk band though from West Coast Canada. SNFU. That that's four. Oh. Okay. Okay. Steve also played drums. You know, it's like yeah, but bands go through certain trends in the early two thousands. It was you know deliberately misspell your band name like Stained and Puddle of Mud, and then you know do amazing live performances in the twenty twenties. <laughs> We've got this old Rickenbacker from the 80s uh, that Steve's gonna restore for us. And I thought we'd get a look at it to begin with and see just what kind of shape this thing is because uh, it's gonna need a little work. Let's just put it that way. Here, hand it over, let's take a peek. So yeah, we've got the, uh, oh my God, that weighs a ton. So we've got, we've got the awesome case on this thing. And uh, get another shot of that right there. Look, look at all the amazing artwork on this. All the stickers. Wow, there's a Betrayer sticker on here. How about that? So the case was duct taped closed because a couple of the cla clasps are broken right off. So th this thing's definitely seen way better days. So let's figure it out. I'm, I'm, I'm almost afraid to look. I'm, Steve's been telling me, you know, he's, uh, like what happened. I guess, you know, it was the 80s thrash scene. You know, there, there, things got a little violent well, every now the and then. The bridge pickup stopped working and the, and the pick guard was broken in three spots. I guess Steve sanded down the finish and was going to give it a nice satin oil finish and then the singer got hold of it. We're going to take a look at what that was. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh shit. There's duct tape here too. Oh, there's duct tape on this end too. Wonderful. Oh, holy yikes. Wow, it almost looks like a lesser known cover. <laughs> here, yeah, okay, here we go. Wow. Okay. Okay. Well, the, the most of the weight is in the case. Let's uh, check how 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 much uh, life is left in these strings because I'm I'm sure they're probably. Did you put new strings on or are these? Just one. Uh, just uh, the other day. The, the, uh, I, the D string. Oh, so much life. You know what? The neck's not too bad. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, legend has it that when the singer got hold of it, he did the artwork. I, I gotta admit, okay, some of the artwork, not too bad. I mean, like, this is kind of cool, I guess, you know, but this used to be a beautiful cream white Rickenbacker and it had, you know, this nice classic look, but they, you know, put EMGs on it because uh, thrash bands, you know, need, definitely needed EMGs for on stage, especially at the local level back in the day, but whatever. Yeah, that pick guard uh, definitely probably seen better days as well. But apparently when the singer got hold of it, he shellacked the entire neck, the front and the back, including the fretboard. That's been scraped off, has it not? Yeah. Okay, cool. Now the back of the neck, you can still see some remnants of the shellac. This still could probably be taken down a little bit more. And like I said, maybe given a nice satin oil finish. And you're going to refinish the base? Totally, yeah. I just, I just cut two pick guards for it. Okay. One to accommodate the EMGs, and then when Craig and I find the actual original parts, Okay. Yeah, because uh, the, the top, the top of the body here, this is uh, this is definitely feeling a little bit rough, and shall we say, I don't think it's supposed to be a patina. No. And that's a 1978 <laughs> base, and the way to figure that out is if you look at the uh, the jack on the back. Okay. There's codes on there. Oh, okay, cool. So, so this is from 78. Yeah. 
made in November. So wow. Okay. okay, great. So this is uh, this is definitely uh, we're in antique territory. So very curious to see how this is going to turn out because right now. I mean, like, this is almost, you know, like one of those episodes, you know, where they go back into the junkyard and pull out an old rusted out piece of shit and then restore it to its glory. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to see the same thing here. I got to say, feeling a little bit of neck dive, but I think that's definitely has something to do with the Rickenbacker design and not so much, you know, what's been done to it after the fact. I think it's mainly an aesthetic thing and yeah, it definitely needs some work. So really looking forward to see what Steve can do to this. Uh, hopefully we can get some shots of him in of this thing as it's being worked on. And somebody didn't mute their fucking phone! Thanks, Steve! That's probably Newman. Did you mention my name, man? <laughs> yes, Craig, we love you very much. Yeah, it's him. It is! Oh, this is great. <laughs> Hi, Craig, you're on Spectre Sound Studios. How's it going, dude? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> anyway, yeah, we're, we're, I'm just, I just basically uncased your your base and we're taking a look at it right now. So anyway, uh, this is Craig Newman from CDN Records. He went on from being a total rule number two to actually being a pretty fucking awesome uh, record label owner. And he's been in the business probably 30 fucking years now. So uh, if you're in Canada and you want to get your hands on some awesome underground death and, and metal and that kind of stuff, definitely check out CDN Records. It's cdnrecords.com or .ca. Doc, cdnrecords.com, definitely check that out. Okay, I'll hand you back over to Steve. All right, so that's it for the Rickenbacker. We're gonna hand this off to Steve and see what he can do with it. I'll try and get you guys some shots as the base is being worked on. Uh, not sure what we're gonna do with the pickups, but this definitely needs a new pick guard because uh, wow, is that ever something like, <laughs> and by ever something, I mean ever something not very good at all. Okay, so we have plugged the base in and uh, it's alive, it actually works. So that's pretty cool, actually. So what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna hand this off to Steve, have him strip it down, sand it down, refinish this, get rid of this horrible, you know, drip marks across the top. Hey, wonderful job there, guys, whoever did that. And, uh, you know, get it back into proper playing shape. Uh, are we gonna keep the EMGs in it or are you gonna go back to the original? That's the first step. The second step will be the actual original parts, which are gonna cost an arm and a leg. So we are gonna go back to the original uh, pickups. Eventually. Yeah. Okay. So my problem here right right now is on the bridge. You got this thing sticking out, and you could really hurt yourself unless that gets uh, gets taken down correctly, because that's jutting out way too far. That could be a real safety hazard. That that's about the only major issue I've got with the base right now. I mean, like other than the you know the horrible finish, um, you know, this could be quite nice. Yeah, with a proper pick guard. You said you actually cut one. What? Cut two. Cut two of them. Yeah. Why two? Well, one to go around those PJs as a first step. Okay. And then when we get the original pickup. And we can only get that oh. from Rickenbacker Heaven. Oh, okay. And pay an arm and a leg for it. Ah, uh, okay. All right, that makes perfect sense. All right, so I'm going to hand this off to Steve. We'll see what he does with it. Hopefully I can uh, come by his place with a camera and uh, look at a work in progress. I think that might be really cool. More on that in just a sec. All right, we're back. And the base has returned. Uh, no duct tape on the case this time. The latches are sort of working a little bit, but I think it's time to maybe buy a new case because uh, this has definitely seen better days. Uh, as you'll notice, we changed out the camera. We're now on a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. I still got my second camera ready to go for close-ups here, but uh, yeah, we're back on the main here. We've changed out the lighting, got things a little bit more interesting mood, I would say. Anyway, I'm sure you guys are dying to see what this thing looks like. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do any cutaways or get any shots of the restoration being done because Steve's not a video guy and uh, the pandemic lockdown uh, definitely had other plans for us. So um, it's just basically, yeah, we can, I, mean, I basically had the base dropped off to me and I get to shoot the before and after, but not the actual restoration process. Sorry about that, guys. I really wish I could have showed you how much work went into this, but it's been about a month and uh, we've got our a completely different instrument. Now this has just turned out absolutely unbelievable compared to what it was. Wow, what a difference. A lot of work's been done to this, you know, sanding down, refinishing, all that, and on the back even, look at that. It's just, it's it's beautiful. It's you know got a bit of a reflective finish now. That wonderful patina is gone, and man, am I ever glad to see it go. Now, we look at things a little bit closely here, we can see maybe a couple little 
screw holes that uh, are kind of still visible. Uh, Steve was saying he could have spent maybe another month on it and got rid of those, but you know, time and budget and all that, uh, considering I think he did a pretty damn amazing job with what he had to work with, considering you know the shape it was in before him. Now, another thing here is the pick guards here are completely made by hand. Uh, Steve got the plastic and cut them out all by himself, you know, drilled all the holes for the pots and the pickups and everything, and this was all just fabricated by him. So, uh, dude, seriously, like, nice job. Wow. And, you know, the base is a lot smoother. Like I said, one of my big gripes was the top here. It was just really uneven because there was, you know, it was dripping shellac and it just felt awful. This is uh, much smoother to the touch. It's not 100% perfect. Uh, Steve was saying he could have got himself, you know, if he had himself a great big buffing wheel, he probably could have done uh, an even better job on it. But I guess he went at it with, you know, a Dremel and just some kind of a, a polishing attachment like that, you know, that was about that big. So... Anybody wants to, anybody knows where we can get a great big buffing wheel for dirt cheap. Hey, be sure to let us know. And uh, yeah, there's a little bit of a flaw here, but other than that, this uh, this instrument is ju just turned out absolutely amazing. Like I'm, I'm completely blown away. It's, it's night and day from what it was. Now, normally this would be the part of the show where I hand the bass off to somebody awesome like Keith Wilkinson, but we're in a province-wide lockdown, so nobody's coming over right now. And um, Eric Oko, uh, he's played bass on the show numerous times, and but he's in Sweden, so I don't think uh, we're going to be able to get him to play it because we're just not going to spend two months shipping the bass back and forth. So we're going to have to make do with me. And uh, please bear in mind, I am not a bass player. I am a studio engineer, first and foremost. So uh, I'm just going to kind of noodle a little bit here, try not to laugh too hard. There we go. Damn, I gotta say, the action on this thing is amazing. This instrument plays great. I think I now understand why Lemmy played these things for all those years. This is just fantastic. I gotta say, not a bad job for restoring an old war beast that's definitely uh, was in questionable condition. It's not 100% factory perfect, but I think Steve did an absolutely magnificent job. Uh, maybe we can get him on the show sometime and possibly answer some questions. Anyway, just wanna say thanks to everybody for watching the show and let me know if you'd like to see some more restorations in the future. Oh yeah, by the way, I've got the Evidence or STFU shirt still on sale today and it ends tonight. So if you'd like to get one of these, follow the link in the description below because it'll be gone at midnight Pacific time. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button on your way out and I'll see you guys in the next video.